And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. We're going to talk about Bitcoin's price action. Um, are we going to get a little more pump or is there going to be a dump in the shorter term? I think I'm going to give you some reasons for both to expect some higher term time frame, you know, higher highs, but in the short term where some possible pull pullback targets are going to be. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what December means for a pre-having uh, December. Are they typically green? Are they typically red? And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the inevitable 30% correction that will come uh, pre-Bitcoin having. So let's jump right in to the charts, starting out on the 15-minute time frame. What I did is highlighted the uh, past couple of weekend trapped boxes. So um, essentially the Friday close, Friday to Saturday, the futures market is closed. And uh, what you're typically gonna see is traders get trapped. And after, <clears throat> let me take that magnet off here. So typically what happens is you get uh, the Asia market, market open on Sunday afternoon and you get a high and the low for the day. Then the uh, UK, let's see. Then the UK is going to uh, run the trend basically, right? Run the trend up and down or break the trend. Uh, US is going to give us a reversal which it doesn't always play out that way, obviously. But here, uh, this way, you know, the trap box is pretty, pretty far and wide. I'm just seeing if I drew that correctly. So Sunday opens up Monday morning. Uh, you get a little whipsaw to the downside, to the upside, and then they send it back to the bottom of the range and only to bust it out. Okay, during the U.S. session, closed above the trap box. And we're onwards and upwards. Uh, same thing, close below the trap box, onwards and downwards in this one. And then for the US here, we close below the trap box during the day and um, then got sent back to the upside. Vice versa, we are now just beginning to close below the trap box. So honestly, here's what I'm thinking. Um, they're trapping these people right here going short and going to send it back one more time to the upside. <laughs> That's the general trend here is sideways and up. And um, now if we do start to close below this region, even on uh, an hourly time frame, I'm going to look for a quick move down to 35.6. Uh, ultimately, though, the four hour is going to hold us up here or not, I think. Um, why is that? Well, you're going to have one, two, three, four, um, or call it one, two, three, I'd say. Oh, this one, one, two, three, four, five drives of hidden bearish divergence where the price is making higher highs, but the RSI is making lower highs. I would say four, which could give you a move to the 1618, which is technically pretty much already confirmed and where would you really confirm it okay a closure below the 618 here probably good enough for me um, to send bitcoin at least at the bottom side of the range probably continues all the way down they grab the liquidity and um, you know you get that one last buying opportunity um, limit orders set down at the 34 to 33 uh, thousand range I do imagine there's going to be some liquidity there. And just looking at this on the higher term time frame, yeah, I would be looking to perhaps be a buyer in this region somewhere. Doesn't really line up with any nice fibs, but, uh, or, or not fibs, but let's see if it does line up with the fibs. So pretty darn close to that 382 and not 0.5, which um, in a bullish market, you are going to see those bounces get picked up at the 382 on the first pass. And then perhaps uh, we run it for more to the upside. 
You got to just remain with that trend. The daily uptrend is still intact. Higher highs and higher lows coming through here. Volatility is now kind of uh, ticked back down and momentum is still to the upside, creeping on up and remains up as long as we're above $37,085. So today we'll have a chance to close below, flip that momentum back over and uh, maybe play out some of the divergence. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing a test back down to 35.6, but um, all is well as long as the four hour holds this trend line. We'll come back tomorrow to see if that is the sign. So we broke below the trap box, retested it and rejected. Yeah, unless we can get back kind of above 37.5 on a four hour, it's going to look uh, like pressure's on to the downside for the short term. And um, okay, just checking in on the weekly time frame. Might as well throw out the BLX and talk about the higher term time frame. Just, you know, overall analysis of what we've been talking about since the beginning of the year is that ultimately when the macro reversal happens, you're going to see Bitcoin make a higher low on the weekly time frame, a higher high, and then we'd be off to the races heading towards the 0.5 and the 618 FIB, which um, is going to be right in that area between 40,800 to call it 47,000, 48,000 in that range. And does it mean we're going to go straight there? No, typically after a 50% rally, 52% rally on the weekly time frame, you do get a little bit of a cooling off period. And um, ultimately, there will be a 30% drawdown. Is it going to be pre-having or post-having? We kind of have the ETF narrative hanging on the backdrop still. People hoping, crossing their fingers, an ETF will get approved in January. Um don't forget, smash the like button, hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed to the channel, we give out daily Bitcoin and crypto analysis. Taking a look at some of the altcoins and some of the underlying market dynamics like, um, for instance, Bitcoin dominance, which is kind of still heading onwards and upwards to our target, uh, making the higher highs and another potential for a higher low right off the 382 for Bitcoin dominance. And as Bitcoin dominance goes up, typically Bitcoin's gonna outperform the general altcoin market. Uh, Tether dominance also trying to put in a bit of a higher low on the weekly, but uh, not there yet, not there yet. And we do want this to break to the downside kind of as a bit of a bear flag, but that is looking more, you know, like it wants to bounce um, on the daily here. Perhaps going to put in the first or second higher low, should I say. So want to keep an eye on that one there. Total three, uh, that is uh, total market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum coming in at $404 billion. In general, if altcoins are going to continue the rally, we want to see this one not do this, right? So we got the... Uh, the lower low and potentially now the lower high. So did we have this level uh, marked off correct? Oh, only time will tell if this does make a lower low, that would in general put some pressure on the altcoins. Um, ETH Bitcoin, uh, we've been talking about this one for some time saying, hey, look, um, if Ethereum Bitcoin can have a trend reversal on the daily time frame specifically, which we have one so far so good, uh, we got the higher lows, the higher high, and just generally want to see that continuation. If this starts to break down, you would expect Ethereum not to perform as well as Bitcoin. Um, let's see, what else do we want to talk about real quick? Uh, Dixie just hanging out between the boxes of peace and prosperity and death and despair. And remember with Dixie, uh, when the, a strong dollar is bad for risk assets. So if the dollar gets above this box, it's going to be bad in general for risk assets. And uh, below this box, we said, well, peace and prosperity. And below this box, even more peace and prosperity. A weak dollar generally rises all ships in risk assets, uh, so to speak. And I'll move it on to Ethereum. Check out some altcoins and um, see if there's anything that 
is appealing to the eye at the moment. Uh, Ethereum. We've been keeping it. Oh, this is a sloppy drawing here. Let's get rid of that. That, that. And we are breaking out of the massive ascending wedge, whatever you want to call it. Um, interesting. I'm just connecting some dots here as we're uh, speaking. As we're speaking. It's funny how, you know, really watch how these things connect. See the ultimate highs right there. That's going to be a major pivot on the market. And where does that line up? Well, the measure move off the ascending triangle, uh, which is technically more likely to break out to the upside. And we've had this one drawn in here since I think about this level right here. And we did say, look, for Ethereum, uh, yeah, the measure move on this is up to about 3,100. And as long as we're above this box, above this level, in general, pressure's on to the upside and we're just consolidating before a bit more of the upside continuations. And, um, but if all those things start to line up more bearish, ETH, Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance for the altcoin sector, that could mean to kind of adjust our opinion on Ethereum. Overall, I'm in the shorter term time frame watching Ethereum just consistently uh, make those higher highs and higher lows. Still, um, still hanging on by a thread here, just like Bitcoin on the four-hour time frame. It is really make or break right now on the four-hour time frame for both of these assets. Volatility is beginning to increase. Let's see if the moving averages can give us any bias here and after a big week again for ethereum uh playing out a bit of a wick uh indecision candle not a whole lot of volume but ethereum's just set to explode guys it's just it's just it's gonna happen it's just a man not a matter of if it's when when does it happen and um you know, completely fine of just, you know, make, dance around here, make some higher lows, even come back in, test this trend line one more time. Ultimately, I would expect price action to come in line with that trend line over the next few weeks, months. I mean, if this took us all the way out to here, that'd be February next year. So, you know, definitely in the cards there for Ethereum. And all right, let's run it down the altcoin chart. Um, has Link lost its luster here? This is looking more bearish on the weekly time frame. Uh, on the daily, looks pretty much like distribution to me, although momentum is still to the upside. Um, I definitely think this one has some room to put in a higher low on that uh, 21 right there on the daily, as long as we're above there. You know, I'd say generally good, but below there, you know, not not so good. Probably going to head down to this target we had on the four hour time frame. Uh, coming back from the, this area right here, saying that probably be a decent buying opportunity. Um, otherwise, if we do hold this trend, you know, first area I'm looking to defeat 1547 and then this trend line and probably off to the races from there. Um, Heading for the deeper target, what do I mean by off to the races? Well, on the weekly time frame, if you go from the ultimate high to the ultimate low, just like we did on Bitcoin, um, there we go. And I will bring up the, the Tau coin. We are just at the 236, you know, 23, 23.15, uh, you know, first level, second level is 29 so ultimately those targets looking to buy the higher lows along the way here. So um, ultimately Chainlink looking very strong. This one of the strongest altcoins in the market. Speaking of strong altcoin, second, um, one of the second strong, I'd say the second, second in line behind uh, Rune is going to be injective. Um, this one almost making new all time highs is scratching at the surface here. And, you know, wouldn't mind a rejection, even a test all the way back down. Wow, that down. To, I don't know. I can imagine this one going down to 11 bucks, but um, definitely 
not impossible. And um, after breaking out of this little, um, call it pizza pattern, pendant, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to call it, you could have drew it like this, perhaps like that. I don't know. This thing's getting sloppier by the minute. But generally, this one uh, was holding a four hour, maybe I was looking at it on a four hour time frame. Just absolutely getting defeated. I would expect to bounce off this area after a nice rally over the weekend. Injective, put in a strong move. If you start to lose that $16 region, that's when you're likely going to come back down and test this 200 exponential as long as we don't lose that area. Generally expecting sideways and up for this one. One of the strongest altcoins in the market. Um, so pullbacks, generally looking to buy those. Um, those higher lows, but that's looking fairly sloppy and you're going to have some, no, no, no bearish divergence. So we're okay there. Just hidden bullish divergence. Wow. Last low is coming back from here and yes, you do have it. So, you know, one drive, maybe we come back, put in another higher low, and then we really give it a run to the upside for Mr. Injective. Uh, another one, keeping an eye out on uh, these, these tokens. Apex is the, um, the token for the decentralized exchange for their decks. Um, Apex is kind of like KuCoin or... Uh, it's the native token for their decentralized platform, GMX, DYDX. Um, this is the, the token for Bybit. So they're very successful. Um, this one, you know, definitely has potential for more. I don't think this is the oldest um, chart, but minimum 39 cents and uh, probably more in the coming bull market. It's still very low market cap wanted to bring up another one um uh maker um maker dow owns over three billion of short-term ust bills earning five percent all those sweet joe biden dollars go directly to the hands of crypto dgens via token buybacks and die staking so shout out to the guys at banter brought up that tweet i thought that was interesting and if you look at maker on the chart here Maker, 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 where did you go? Come on. On the weekly time frame, you can see the W was just completed with a nice retest. And in general, the real world asset uh, narrative has been pretty hot. You can see, boom. So second side of the W, uh, you know, ultimate target up there back at 2,400 bucks. Um, if this one wants to continue onwards and upwards back above 1472 this week, would look good for continuation to the upside. Um, daily volume. I mean, it's just struggling, uh, struggling to chirp its way onwards and upwards. Momentum is getting frothy. 1469 will cross back down. So you'll have some, not really any bearish divergence. So, you know, this one sideways and up in general. Uh, what other coin I wanted to bring up? Rune. Um, I don't even know why I'm bringing this one up. Uh, massive pennant. Best performing altcoin to Bitcoin pairing. Uh, just absolutely. Um, so again, the Rune. And then I just heard about this flip coin. Flip. Let's see. What about that? Available on Bybit. Oh, that, that flipped to the moon there. I don't know exactly what this, uh, 
highly esteemed internet technology is, but uh, apparently it got shot to the moon. Um, and then injective. Just holding on by two teeth here and really needs to hold uh, this level specifically right here at 1626. As long as we're above there, generally bullish. Otherwise, looking for a quick move down to about 15 bucks, 15.50. Um, that would be the next next zone down for Mr. Injective. Overall, did kind of break out the strong downtrend on the 15 minute on the four hour as well. So made the higher high, higher low, but it is waning in its um, acceptance above the green 55 and might come down and do the official retest of this trend line as long as we don't close any four hours back below 1545. Generally good uh, for this one, making another big leg up. Um, this one, injective protocol, whatever they inject you with over here, but uh, you can see this has been just a massive party to the upside. Generally though, if Bitcoin does play out the route down to about 35, where were we saying? Uh, down to this zone here at around 34,000 to 33.3, 3, then I, I don't imagine it stops there. I, I think you know, a wick down probably at some point we are going to come fill this wick right here. This this guy um, coming in at 31.5. So that's the big question. Bitcoin having uh, back on to kind of the theory at hand with the sideways and up and just the boring. Oh, what is Bitcoin doing? It's going sideways and up. Well, uh, typically. This is what you get pre Bitcoin having. about a year before 52 weeks. So this is the next having April 2024. Um, that is when they cut the reward in half. Then you've got this having uh, that was April 2020. This one was back here, July 2016. And then you've got November 2012. So what's happened every single time uh, 12 months before the Bitcoin having the rally starts the FOMO begins people generally Decide, well, there's going to be less supply on the market. I'm going to own some Bitcoin this time. I, whatever happened last time, I'm getting in the market. So you get a bit of a pump. It's usually, I, I, I don't have the uh, stat on that one. Well, let's just take a look. I think it was around 100%. So this one from the bottom to the high, 145%. Remember, this is just 52 weeks, 200%, 52 weeks before the halving cycle and 560%. So law of diminishing returns. And this one, you got the pre-halving dump, which that doesn't look like a lot right there, but that was 50%. You could even call that a post-halving dump right there. Um, and notice, you know, just the perfect symmetry from the parabolic <coughs> high to high, you're exactly 96 weeks there. 200 weeks there from the interesting 200 weeks and from this high to that high 200 weeks. Oh, a lot of lines, a lot of charts, but typically 200 weeks from where we're at right here puts us into two hundred weeks. February twenty twenty seven. Does that look right? I think that's that's a little too far. <clears throat> Why? Because we go from 12 months before the halving to the high. That was 136 bars. 130 bars. Of 
is 105. So what I'm measuring is how many weeks it took from the 12 months before the halving cycle. And uh, yeah, it's about 130 bars. So 130 bars, I guess there's two ways you can do it now. 130 bars would put us right here for the next parabolic blow off top coming in uh, September 2025. That looks about fair to me, you know, when Bitcoin heads up to about 180, 200,000, something like that, I would be absolutely thrilled. So again, what are we doing here every day monitoring the market? We're taking a look at statistically what is most likely to happen to Bitcoin and then the altcoins uh, in the preceding months. So if Bitcoin takes a run up here is either before or after you're going to get that 30 percent drawdown. 30% from this level, um, let's say we hit on the high side at 47,000, 30%, 35% takes you right down to that $30,000 pivot. I think that uh, that looks pretty fair to me. I'd be willing to suffer a 30% correction. So you got to stay through the tough times, be there in the good times. We are having a little bit of a short-term pullback, but overall, in general, um, these statistics generally do play out. And I like to kind of underestimate, over, underpromise, over-deliver. Um, and I guess I'll just bring up two other ones really quick. Check in on Tau. And by the way, you can get these from Maxi uh, in the link in the description below. Uh, this one again is kind of holding on to its last leg as well. Either playing out a massive kind of uh, ascending triangle or it already broke down. So it depends on how you draw it. I'm kind of leaning now towards the broke down side. Um, although this one has just been, you know, you can't hate the, uh, the extreme upside that it's had and could be consolidating in a range at the highs before kind of hitting the parabolic blow off target, which let's just unmark this stuff really quick. If you're aggressive, wick to wick, parabolic blow off target is gonna be at 408 for this one. Um, it's looking a bit frothy and if you do it based off of the candle bodies well, we hit it to a T and pulled back. So, um, yeah, whichever side this wick takes out, you know, going to give us a greater move to the upside of the downside for Mr. Tao. I think that is a good way to resolve it. And then following up on XLR, which is a competitor to Net Zero and Chainlink, a bit of a degenerative play but after we brought this one up um, I'll just let the proof be in the pudding where is if I can find it here XLR XLR XL there it is Uh, so I think we, I, well, I, I know I was bringing it up, uh, down in this region around 52 cents. And, um, we said this one is likely to do something similar to, um, Mr. Tao. Why? Uh, it's just kind of an underscenes, uh, low market cap, high opportunity coin because of some of the partnerships they're having, um, I won't go into the details on that, but um, just saying that um, it was either going to do one or two things based on what Tao had done in the past. Again, low market cap, super high risk, um, alternate coin. I can't even tell you what it does, uh, but if we're going to chart something, might as well have some fun and... Uh, compared to something, right? So Tau, what it did on the weekly time timeframe, um, 
it came back, hit the 618, rejected, or sorry, the 786 and rejected. We blasted right through that 786, telling me probably more upside to go. Uh, high volume coming in on this thing. It's still very, very under the radar. And um, yeah, I, I mean, to me, I, I'd be looking for this, this target to get hit. Um, which is coming in at about a buck. Yeah, probably that psychological number, probably going to put some sell pressure in on that one. So still potential for more there. Um, however, if we do start closing back below five, uh, excuse me, uh, below 58 cents, 58.5819, I'd be looking for kind of a greater, uh, greater pullback on this one and judge it from there. All right, um, anything else I wanted to bring up? This one, Neutron putting in a big double top here. Looks like it does. If, if the 21 can't save it, uh, this one's either gonna have massive downside or massive upside, anywhere below 40 cents and uh, looking for a greater move all the way down to 32. Um, if we can take out this last daily high at uh, 54 cents, I'm looking for a big, big push up for Mr. Neutron and, um, well, 60 cents to be fair, to be fair on that one. And the other one, everybody's talking about Pith Network. I wouldn't touch it with a hundred foot pole yet. Uh, personally, uh, just way too volatile, volatile pre ICO kind of, uh, thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not touching it. Uh, uni also, you know, just kind of had a big push last week, 20% to the upside, barely tagged the upside target and, um, still looking for more on this one in general, as long as we can hold the higher low structure on even the hourly time frame. uh, still potential for more on this one. Dot, um, another one that is uh, pulling back in the short term. Either these things are going to have a big consolidation up here and a huge rip higher to the upside targets, which I think is more likely than not, um, or they're going to crack back down below this trend line and probably come for a big leg down somewhere around four cents for dot. And the other one that, so uni, dot, and um, Guess another one to look at here as well. Huge potential for Arbitrum, uh, getting a fair pullback, filled out this wick. Just don't want to see any closures back below 92 cents and generally um, still targeting a big move up to about 134 for this one to uh, complete that W. That's it for today, guys. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Uh, make sure you Ask a question below if you have one. Cyber Monday discounts. If you want a trading crypto course, there's a link in the description below. How to set up TradingView, NordVPN, Mexi if you want to get some of these coins. And um, that's it for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow and hope you have a good one. Take care.